Hi there, in this video, I'm going to simulate an automated warehouse system using factory IO. First, I'll review the connection process between Codesys and factory IO. After that, the programming step will be started. This step will be completed in the next video. Then, the project will be simulated using factory IO. Finally, you will see how the program can be extended, to consider reset and emergency conditions. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content, we have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI, and microcontroller based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content, I will be posting through the channel. Alright, let's start the video, with this warehouse in factory IO, which was explained in the previous video. As you know, I can connect its sensors and actuators to Codesys, via an OPC server. In this video, let's do the connection process, after that, I'll start the programming step. Ok, let's create a new project in SFC. Now, let me change the name of this POU. You can use your arbitrary name, if you want to change it. Now, like the previous videos, let me create a global variable list. I select FIO as its name. Because, I'm going to define all variables, which will be connected to the equipment inside factory IO. Alright, I've defined these variables. Now, let's connect them to the equipment. First, I need to use the symbol configuration option, to determine which variables of my controller can be shared with other devices. Well, the FIO list is not visible inside the symbol configuration window. Because I've not used any variables from this list. To solve this problem, let me use one of them. Now, I can see the FIO list. Let me select all defined variables. Now, let's run this controller, and then, download the current project onto the controller. Note that, during the previous videos, the connection process was explained in details. Now, let's use Kepsiver X software. Well, I've defined these tags, based on the defined variables inside the FIO list. Now, all variables are equal to false or zero. Because they are not connected to any equipment. First, let's check the connection quality between the controller and Kepsiver X software. Well, it's good for all tags. 
It means the defined variables inside the FIO list, are connected to these tags. Now, let's connect the tags to equipment inside factory IO. Note that, like the previous videos, I've used these three letters, FIO, before all tags inside Kepsiver X software. Now, I can use them to search and find my tags. Now, let's connect the equipment to these tags. Alright, I've created a connection between the factory I.O. and Codesys. Note that, its details were explained during the previous videos. As you can see, the state of some variables such as these two sensors, have been changed based on their normal state in factory I.O. Now, let's start the programming step. First, let me create another POU. It will be executed beside my SFC program, to control its sequence. Now, I'm going to use an RS instruction, to change the state of a variable, using the start and stop push buttons. Actually, this variable, running mode, will indicates the system must be in running mode or not. Well, here I need to use OR logic. Because, beside the stop push button, the emergency and reset push button can stop the warehouse system too. Remember, the stop push button and the emergency button are normally close. Therefore I need to invert their states inside the program. Alright, let's open the other POU, SFC underscore PRG. First, let's use the running mode variable as the first transition condition. Now, if the running mode variable is enabled, the controller will exit from the initial step. The first step after that, is loading, in which the two conveyors must be activated, to move a box to the crane. Well, when a box reaches the end of load conveyor, the state of this sensor changes to zero. In consequence, its inverse state can be used, to quit the loading step. Now, the crane must lift the box. This process includes three steps. First, the crane must open its forks to the left side. So, my program must activate the forks left actuator. Note that, Forks must be under the box. So, the lift actuator must be inactive. Well, the sensor, whose name is at left, can be used to detect when the controller must go to the next step. At the next step, the lift actuator will be used to lift the box. Now, the falling pulses from the sensor whose name is moving Z, can be used to determine the exact time, that the controller lift the box completely. Instead of that, 
let me determine a constant time. The step, receiving to, must be executed about 2 seconds, to lift a box completely. Well, let's create the next step. Well, to complete the receiving process, the controller must reset the fork's left actuator. Like the previous step, let's set a fixed time, to execute the third step of the receiving process. Ok, these three steps receives a box from the conveyors. They can be considered as one step. So, let's create a macro and write receiving, as its name. Now, let's move the three steps into the created macro. Note that, you can either use macro or not. It doesn't change the logic or sequence of your program. Now, I have a macro in my program, including the three receiving steps. Let's compile the program to ensure there isn't any error, and then continue the programming step. Well, after receiving a box, the next step is transporting the box to an empty position. First, I need a variable that determines an empty position. As I've explained in the previous video, the position can be a number from 0 to 55. So, it's wrong to select bool as its data type. I'll correct the data type, by the next compiling. Pay attention. The initial value of this variable is 0. Its value must be increased by one unit, before transporting each box. Therefore, let's use an entry action for this purpose. As you know, the entry action is executed only once time, and based on the program, the stored position in this variable will be increased by one unit, at the beginning of my transporting step. As I've explained in the previous video, the actuator, whose name is target position, can be used to determine the destination of the crane. So. I only need to move the store number in next position variable, to target position actuator. Well, based on the program, the crane will transport its box, to the stored position in this variable. Now. Let me create a new transition. Note that, when the crane is transporting a box, the sensor whose name is moving X is active too. So, I can use a falling edge detector, to determine when the box reaches its final position. Well, let's compile the project.
as you see, there are some errors in my program, as a result of this wrong data type, for next position variable. Let me change its data type from bool to word to remove the errors. Well, there isn't any error. Until now, the three important steps, including loading, receiving, and transporting, have been written. Let's continue and complete the automated warehouse project in the next video. Thanks for watching my content, if you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.